Background agent is like a remote coding agent that spins up your repo in the cloud, works on it, and then notifies you when that feature is finished. To get this started, we'll just click on this new cloud icon. So make sure to update your cursor if you haven't already. We'll also need to go into our settings and disable the privacy mode because what background agents is gonna do is create a clone of our repo in the AWS cloud and then work on that privately. Redesign our homepage. I want you to make it look snappy and cool, taking inspiration from Supabase, Next.js, and OpenAI designs. I'll go to Dribble and grab this screenshot, and I'll paste it as design inspo. Then I'll toggle this to my fake edits branch, which we just made, and I'll let it go off to the races. At any time, we can hit this button and see exactly what's going on. And we can see that it's gonna create this Ubuntu image in an AWS instance. It's gonna clone our repo. It's gonna install all the packages that it needs to run our environment. And we'll let this go off on its own. All right, at any point in time, we can click on the cloud icon to reopen our background agent. And we can spin as many of these up as we want. But just be aware that this is gonna use more credits, especially when you use these max models but I think the Claude Forest Sonnet model is recommended compared to Opus. We can click into the task to view the progress and you can see the actual cursor instance that's running on the cloned version of our repository. We can see here on the left all the files that it's already updated and we can see here in our cursor chat that it's already ran 62 messages. It looks like it was running into some issues with the development server with some dependencies not being installed and it went ahead and installed them, tried rerunning the server, and it kind of got stuck in a loop here. It created a simple HTML preview for us as well. And then finally, it looks like after about 60 messages, it's created a bunch of new components and finished the new homepage. Now we have several options. We can actually go into here and manually edit the files or add follow-up instructions or we can check this out locally or import to a local chat. Usually this is not gonna be perfect, but we can go ahead and create a pull request if it is. For me, I'm gonna import this into a local chat and finish the changes off myself. All right, so we've imported the changes into our current cursor chat, and you might get some of these stash issues if you were working on some files beforehand. I'll just cancel these changes and go check it out in the app. All right, so I'm opening up my localhost 3000 and I'm not seeing any changes here. So let's check out the preview.html that it also created. Wow, so that is pretty crazy for a landing page. It's created these hues and wow, that's really good. <laughs> But we can see the chat preview here is working and it looks really good. Obviously none of these buttons are gonna work, but we can just spin up more background coding agents to work on all of these features simultaneously. This seems to be using usage-based requests. So that background agent actually used $5 and that's probably because I was using the Opus model instead of the recommended Sonnet models.